How's it going everybody? This video we're going to look at finding derivatives of the sine and cosine functions. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. So the one thing that you've got to remember, all the stuff you've learned up to this point, uh, the power rule, the product rule, quotient rule, chain rule, all that still applies. You're still going to have to use those uh, those properties to find the uh, derivatives. But the, the difference now is we're not going to have just polynomials we're finding, finding the derivative of. We're going to do trig functions. This video we're doing sine and cosine and then the video after this will be the other trig functions, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. Okay, So the main thing that you've got to learn here is what's the derivative of sine? Well, the derivative of sine u is cosine u, and then you have to multiply times the derivative of whatever you're taking the sine of. So the derivative of sine is cosine times the derivative of whatever u is, what you're taking the sine of. And then the derivative of cosine is negative sine u, times the derivative of what you're taking the cosine of. So that's what you have to remember. And in the next video, you'll get the formulas for the other trig functions. And in order to find these derivatives, you've got to memorize them. If you don't memorize these, then you won't be able to work the problems. It's that simple. Okay? All right, so... Just remember, derivative of sine is cosine, derivative of cosine is negative sine. All right, so let's look at this first problem. They want us to find the derivative. And so we have y prime is equal to, so what's the derivative of cosine? I'm, I'm sorry, what's the derivative of sine? It's cosine times the derivative of what you're taking the sine of. So what's the derivative of 2x? It's 2. And so we get y prime is 2 cosine 2x. And there's your answer. All right, let's look at the next one. We have y equals 2 sine x squared. So y prime is 2 cosine x squared times the derivative of what you're taking the sine of. So times the derivative of x squared. The derivative of x squared is 2x. And so we get y prime is 4x cosine x squared. And there's your derivative. All right, next example. See, this stuff's pretty easy. All right, so let's, let's look at this. Now, in this video and the next video, I'm going to do this one step where I rewrite this. And after, after that, I'm not going to rewrite it anymore in later on videos. Okay? So, here, we have y is equal to... Now, what I want you to understand here, what I want you to see here, is sine squared x... That's the same thing as sine x and then all of that squared, okay? But instead of writing sine x in parentheses and the squared out here, we just write it like this. We put the exponent right here. But this means the same thing as this. Now, what's the reason that I'm rewriting it like this? Well... The reason I'm rewriting it like this is so you can see that we have sine x in parentheses raised to a power. So what this tells us is we need to use the chain rule. Okay? So remember the chain rule, the exponent comes down, so that's 2 sine x, subtract 1 from the exponent, so that gives us a power of 1. And so sine x in parentheses raised to the first power is just sine x, OK? 
okay? So remember, the chain rule. The exponent comes down, we subtract one from the exponent, and then what does the chain rule say? Times the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. And so what's the derivative of sine x? Well, that's, whoop. That is cosine x. And so that's going to give us y prime is equal to sine 2x. All right, so what you might be wondering now is where in the world did sine 2x come from? Well, do you remember from trig? Did you watch the video right before this? Applied calculus review of trigonometry or trigonometry review. Okay, do you remember that? That video? This is what? This is the double angle identity from trig. This is the double angle identity for sine. So I just wrote it as sine 2x. All right. All right, let's look at another problem. All right. So I've got sine 2 sine cubed of 2x to the 4th. Now I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it so we can see it. This is sine 2x to the 4th, all of that cubed. Okay, That's what that means. Sine cubed, it means all of this is in parentheses raised to the 3rd power. And I'm just write, writing it like this so you can see the parentheses, the exponent, and you can see that it's the chain rule. Okay, it helps you see that. All right, so I get y prime. The 3 comes down, so that's 6 times sine 2x to the 4th. All of that squared. All right. Now, what, is, what does the chain rule say? The 3 comes down, subtract 1 from the exponent, and then times the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. That's the chain rule. So what's the derivative of sine 2x to the 4th? Well, that's cosine 2x to the 4th times the derivative of what you're taking the sine of. So that's times 8x cubed. Okay. Remember, this right here is the derivative of what's inside the parentheses, the sine 2x to the 4th. And so we get y prime is, let's see, that's going to be, what, 48x cubed sine squared 2x to the 4th cosine 2x to the 4th. And there's your answer. Okay. Now, just remember, whenever you're doing this, remember, I'm just doing this step here so you can see it in parentheses raised to a power. This step right here, you don't have to show that step. I'm just doing it so you can see chain rule better. Okay? All right, let's look at the next one. Y equals the square root of 1 plus cosine 2x. All right, so y prime is, now, before I go to this, before I do this step, if you've been watching my videos, you know that when I take the, square, the derivative of a square root function, I have a shortcut I like to use. So remember, typically when you work this problem, you would, you would rewrite it as this. And write it all as raised to the one half power, and then you would use the chain rule on this. But there's a shortcut when you're taking the derivative of a square root. And if you want to watch the video, I have a video on just that. Just search my channel for a uh, shortcut for finding the derivative of a square root. Okay, and this only works on square roots. All right, so whenever you're taking the derivative of a square root in the denominator, it's two times whatever the square root is. Always. Two times whatever this is. 
And then what goes in the numerator? Well, what goes in the numerator is the derivative of what's underneath the square root. So what's the derivative of that? The derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of cosine is negative sine times the derivative of what you're taking the cosine of. So the derivative of 2x is 2. And so I get y prime is negative sine 2x over the square root of 1 plus cosine 2x. The, the 2's here cancel. And so this is our answer. All right. All right, I hope all this is making sense. And, and you know, it's important that you, that you understand all of this because if you understand this, then the next video is easy. It's going to be easy because it's the same thing. It's just different formulas for the derivatives of the trig functions. All right, so let's look at this. The electric power P developed in a resistor of an amplifier circuit is P equals 25 cosine squared of 120 pi T, where T is the time. Find the expression for the time rate of change of power. All right, so the time rate of change. Well, that's finding the derivative. So we're going to find the derivative of P. So let's just go ahead and write this down. So that's 25. And look, that's cosine squared. So let's, let's do this. Let's write it as cosine. I'll tell you what, let's do this. Let's go ahead and keep it like this. Tip, what I've done in the other problems is I would have rewritten this as cosine 120 pi t, and I would have put all this in parentheses squared. Okay, But for this problem, let's not do that. Let's just leave it like this. And But what I want you to do is I want you to picture this. I want you to picture that cosine of 120 pi t is in parentheses raised to the second power. Okay, Now, if this confuses you, then go ahead and rewrite it in the parentheses raised to the power, if that helps you. Okay, but for this problem, let's just leave it like this. And so I get P prime is, okay, so what happens? The 2 comes down, so that's 50. Subtract 1 from the exponent, so 2 minus 1, that would be an exponent of 1, but we don't write the 1, we just, it's understood. And that's 120 pi t. And then it's times the derivative because we're doing chain rule, then it's times the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. So what's inside the parentheses? Cosine of 120 pi t. Remember, you're picturing this as this over here. So it's this is what's in parentheses. So we got to take the derivative of cosine 120 pi t. And so that's going to be the derivative of cosine is negative sine 120 pi t times the derivative of what you're taking the cosine of. So what's the derivative of 120 pi t? Well, that's just 120 pi. And so I get p prime is equal to, let's see, what, what is that going to be? I have to get my calculator out. So 50 times 120. So that's going to be negative 6,000 pi times sine 120 pi t times cosine 120 pi t. All right, so, so for this problem, look, I, I don't have a problem with you leaving your answer like this. But what I do want to show you is, the, is that we can, let me move this up just a little bit. But what I want to show you is we can rewrite this. This is the same thing as P prime 
that's going to be negative 3,000 pi times 2 sine one, whoop, 120 pi t cosine 120 pi t. Okay? Now, remember that we have sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x cosine x. And see how we have that right here? And so, so what we have here is, see the 120 pi t? That's like your x right here. And so what do we have to do? See, we got 2 sine, see that? cosine. And so this would be p prime is negative 3000 pi times the sine of 2 times, see 2 times x, so 2 times 120 pi t, which would be negative 3000 pi sine of 240 pi t. Okay, so you know, as far as as far as I'm concerned, if you're in my class, you can leave it like this. But you can see how this is this is a little simpler. Okay, you know, if you're working on something and you have to plug numbers in, it's easier to plug the numbers into this rather than this. It's less to type into the calculator. Okay, so that that's why I showed you that. All right. All right, let's look at this one. Find the differential. All right, so we've got y equals sine 2x cosine x squared. And they want us to find the differential. So remember, you, we've done this earlier. The differential is dy equals, and then it's the derivative of this, times dx. Okay? All right, so let's take the derivative of this thing right here. So to take the derivative of this, we have to do what? We've got to use product rule. Okay? So we have two functions here. We've got sine x and we've got cosine x squared. So product rule is derivative of the first function. So that's going to be cosine 2x times the derivative of what you're taking the sine of. All right, so this is the derivative of sine 2x. So the product rule, the derivative of the first function, which is this, times the second function, cosine x squared, plus the derivative of the second function. So let's take the derivative of the second function. So that's negative sine x squared times the derivative of what you're taking the cosine of, which is 2x. So this is the derivative of the second function, and then times the first function. So, so times sine 2x. So that's, that's the product rule. Okay? That's your product rule. So now, whoop, I'm sorry, and I just about forgot, times dx. Okay? And so we get dy, that's going to be 2 cosine 2x cosine x squared. And that's going to be minus uh, 2x sine 2x sine x squared. Now, notice I wrote this first, this second. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. So why did I do it? Well, because we got 2x first here, so I'm going to put 2x first there, x squared, and then the x squared term. Now, it, if you don't do that, it's not wrong, okay? We just try to, uh, just try to make it look nice and organized. And then, remember, times dx. And there's not really much you can do with this. Uh, so, you know, that's really about all you can do with it. I mean, I guess if you wanted to, you could you could factor a 2 out, but there's really no sense in it. Okay. 
All right, so let's look at this one. Find the slope of a line tangent to the curve y equals 5 sine 3x, where x is equal to 0 0.2. All right, so let's, let's just write this down. All right, so we want to find the slope of the tangent line. We just need to take the derivative and then evaluate the derivative at 0 0.2. And so I get y prime is going to be 5 cosine 3x, right? Derivative of sine is cosine times the derivative of what you're taking the sine of, so times 3. And so I get y prime is 15 cosine 3x. And so now to find the slope, that's the derivative evaluated at point 2. So that's going to be 15 cosine 3 times point 2. And so let's see. Let's see what that gives us. That's going to be 15 times cosine of 3 times point 2. And that gives us 12 point, and I'm going to round it to one decimal, 12.4. All right. Now, I don't know if you're going along with the uh, video, if you're going along, you know, working as I'm working, taking notes or whatever, and punching stuff in calculators. And you might be thinking, well, I didn't get 12.4. Your calculator has to be in radians. Okay, make sure your calculator is in radian mode and then punch it in. If you if you typed it in and your calculator was in degrees, then you're not going to get the right answer. But, you know, that, that's all of this video. And I would encourage you to watch the next video, which is going to be the derivative of the other trig functions. So check that one out. It'll be more practice and you'll you'll see the other formulas. So I hope the video helped. Check out my other videos. Give me a like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.